So, this is how to build my L11 5A3 or AWM part 2. Obviously, if you want to build the gun, of course watch part 1 first. It is linked in the description, the top comment and the card above right now. On to the trigger. Draw this shape, I'll cut it out. Repeat for the other side and then in that notch, so put a rubber band in and then cover the corrugation. Or you can use a spring, the position is shown from the diagram you can see on the top left corner. Which is behind the hole that you put the pin in and at the back. And then put the pin in, put a paper pin in. Now make some sort of housing, like a box or something that you can put the trigger inside. Then make a little bar so you can stick it out of the back as you can see on the top left corner. Then test the trigger and make it longer, like add something at the back of that bar to make it feel better if you want to. Um, I add a little pin at the back to make the um, tension higher so it feels nicer. And remember to glue this down tight. If you use the spring, here's how you make it in the diagram. So you don't need the back bar, you just need to have a top thing. And yeah, that's all. If you felt that was a little too rushed of explaining how to make the trigger, you can also check this video out which I'll go in depth in how to make triggers. But keep in mind I, would, I never made the hammer because I never made them. Because I can't be bothered. Now insert your trigger pack into your gun after trimming the pin down so it fits nicely in there. The pin shouldn't be st uh, glued to anything, it should be free, like, free to move. Um, the box will hold everything in together if you did it nice and uh, did it well. Anyways, it will fit nicely in there if you follow instructions correctly. Um, and then put this little piece in the front, that will be the thing that stops it from going anywhere and uh, stopping the mag release. And then glue your trigger pack in with the thing. And as shown, yeah, it should look something like this from the side now. Now make these two panels, they will be what holds your mag in. Um, now make this piece, the back piece where it's only the top layer, that goes towards your trigger. So that's what covers the mag well. And in the front there is just a piece of reinforcement. Now stick these two panels inside and cover the corrugations. Now make this piece, this will be the mag release with the spring at the back. This is pretty self-explanatory of how to make it from the side view, so there you go. That's basically where it will fit on the gun. And the hole in the middle will be where the pin goes. And obviously, make a pin that fits inside your magwell. Then cover the corrugation. Now make a panel with like a little tip, like a little extended bit at the top. Then you curve that bit down so it can be curved. Then do the same thing for the other side and then and then measure how wide your bottom, like your magwell is, and mine is about like, I don't know, like 2 or 3 millimeters. And then make that your width, and then put those two pieces together. For those grooves, you just make them the same way you did your handguard, as in the mainframe handguard. Now cut a hole at where you think the mag release will touch the mag, then cover the bottom. Now if you want to make your magazine have a spring in it, and like actually can hold more than one bullet, and like, you know, stack them. You can fold a piece of cardboard, make it like a Z shape, and then continue that up to the top, and then add a piece, just glued on the top of that Z piece, and then you got yourself a spring-loaded flat surface, and then you just put your bullet on top. Because this is a single feed, we don't have to worry about like the bump on the follower, whatever it's called. If your magazine um, catch knob is like too big, uh, you have to leave a space for it, but if you did it well, then you don't need that. So yeah. Here's a side view of the next part. Note the bit that is all colored in. That's the actual shape you have to make because uh, the way I did it was not the best because I had to edit it and fix it later. But if you do that at the first try, it'll be way better. But I mean, mine still works, so it's fine. But it's easier if you just do that at the first place. So with that, with that, with that in mind, let's continue. Remember, uh, the next two photos, you have to do the ramp first. Then make this small little step, which goes on the mag release. Remember, this picture is not 100% accurate. It has to be a ramp, as shown in the next picture. Cover the corrugation, and yeah, if, but if you've still followed how I did it, you have to cover it with a stronger piece to make it a ramp that actually works, and not just a top layer piece that will just crumble. So if you did it my way, I, I, you have to do it stronger, like make the ramp strong, which I did. At this point, the mag release is not glued in yet, so you put the stub like the, the notch thing inside to the hole of the mag and then you put it inside the gun at the same time both of them together then you move it around to test the optimal height that you want and get it as close to the real one as possible then when you found your height you can glue the pin in which means that every time you put the mag in it will stay at that like height yeah now here I added a piece at the back of the spring because I wanted to 
um, because the spring's not long enough and the like the bag release is a little weird. So after I added that piece, it got stronger and it worked fine, so I kept it. You can also do it if you want to, but if your spring length is perfectly fine, then just leave it. Next, just add this bar at the front so your mag release won't over travel to the front and just fall out. Now we, it's time to make the cover the corrugation at the bottom of the trigger. So make this little hole, that will be where the trigger fits in, and then just cover the corrugation. And I did that by shoving the hole inside the trigger first, as in like the trigger bar, whatever it's called. I don't know, like the trigger body itself, and then shove it up there, and then fix it so like it's uh, facing the correct way, and then glue it down slowly, and then I trim the, out the outsides where it's like, you know, extras. And then, yeah, there you will have a hole that the trigger fits nicely into, and you cover the corrugation. And make sure it's long enough so it can be... I'm covering the end of the curve hand uh, grip and then the basically the start of the mag release so basically you're covering the whole bottom bit and now we shall make the bar that protects the trigger I forgot what it's called I'm called it that here's a diagram of how to make it so yeah like this and then you make that you cut it into that shape then you cover the corrugation now for the barrel, this is what it looks like into the gun frame. As you can see, the end is like a little bit inside the, I don't know, what's it called? Receiver, whatever. Make it face as straight as possible with the gun, like um, in line as, as best as you can. And then cover the bottom. I know this picture is blurry, but oh well, cover the bottom. And then cover the front as well. Remember the cover, uh, add a piece of cardboard be uh, at the front of the magazine, as you can see in this diagram. So you're basically covering that shape there, as you can see highlighted with cardboard diagrams. I don't know what to call it, but yeah, figures. But yeah, in front of the magazine as well, so that the magazine won't wobble front and back. However, don't um, let any glue into the like magwell itself. Put it like behind the cardboard, if you know what I mean, so that your mag can still fit inside, you know? Yeah, so basically put the glue in where the mag won't touch the glue. Because the cardboard I use is thin, I will put a little bit, an extra layer in between the barrel and the cardboard like side panels so that it'll be more strong, uh, stronger and then cover the corrugation. Then make this um, arch kind of thing at the bottom. On the side, this is what it looks like on the side. Now here's a diagram of what the entire piece I'm not the like. best at drawing, but basically the, the part that bends, you remove the top layer as in the bottom layer, and then the other two panels should be the same size. Now this is what mine um, looks like right now. If you see any parts that you haven't done, um, do them now and then let's continue. Now let's make the bolt. First, make a giant long cardboard tube that can fit inside the ch uh, receiver or chamber, whatever, and make sure that it's long enough. You can always cut it short, but you can't extend it. Now basically use the same cardboard you used to fold the shape of the receiver, like the top bit, and then fold it so that it has the same shape. Then experiment with some line shapes and then cut it when you think that it's good. You can see on the diagram on the far right bit, um, next to two, you can see how mine turned out to look like. And then cover the corrugation on the back. Now fully insert your rod into the chamber and when it stops, draw a line across about a mill like a centimeter or so, like half a centimeter after the end of the chamber. Then cut it there and cover the corrugation from the back. Now make a paper pin and then wrap some cardboard around it at the, at the tip so that it becomes like a stopper pin. And then take that piece you just fold it and then cover the back and then put a little piece of cardboard at the, about a centimeter behind that. Make it the same uh, centimeter, like same distance from your line of the thing if you know what I'm saying. Uh, look at the diagram, it's way more easier to look at it. Now make this tiny shape and then layer it with a bunch of top layer cardboard to make it strong and you know because it's small. Now at the side where there's no hole, uh, you can see in the diagram that's what the piece should look like. Remember that notch so you can actually fit it onto the thing and you can cover the corrugation on there. So wrap it around, make it a circle and that's what it looks like from the bottom. Cut a notch at the side of your thing and then uh, cut a longer notch at the bottom of that. And then cover that hole with a curved piece, as you can see at the back of that. Now we're going to do step 4 in that diagram on the right, as you can see there. You put the rod into the pin, 
and then you glue it the pin into the rod. Remember the um the other piece, the, like the angled piece, should be separate, so we can actually rotate. And then I'll put that piece that you just made into the thing. And if you did it well, it should fit like this and cover the corrugation at the bottom of the round bit as well. Now expand that hole on the bottom of that thing, put a small little paper pin through, then adjust its position until you're happy with it, then put that pin through a piece of cardboard at the bottom, and then cut it so you have the nice, um, you know, correct distance from the bottom, and uh, from the side panels, and then you can put hot glue on the top of that pin to glue it to the top, and then bottom to glue it to the thing, as in like, you know, the side panel. Make a small curved piece at the bottom that fits nicely into the groove at the bottom of that. Um, keep in mind, don't make it too long because the front we will need to make a ramp so that it like you know slides back on easily. It will all make sense in a moment. Now glue the top bit into the bottom bit and then cover the rear corrugation. Um, remember, there's three of them. Then put a little piece of paper pin to like make a fire pin firing pin detail. Now make a curved bit. Just like bend it and then just trim it so it fits on there and then stick it on there. This will make it, um, make the bolt uh, become easier to go back on to where it is. I don't know how to say it but it just works so. Now, glue a bunch of cardboard piece like paper pieces like as in like one layer pieces together with different sizes so they make into a sort of a ball shape. Now I have sort of a ball shape and I have a piece of sandpaper. And now time to spend about, I don't know, one or two hours grinding this thing down with hand unless, you know, you have a sand machine, which I don't, so I basically have to grind this thing down with my hands. Make a piece of paper rod and bend it. If that bend looks, dirt, uh, looks bad, clean it off by chopping off like excess bits. Make a tiny square piece at the longer side. Make a hole into the rod and then shove your pin through. And trim that square bit so it fits nicely at an angle. Uh, trim it at an angle, I mean, but yeah. This here is a diagram as well. Um, experiment with it before, you know, gluing it down. So, yeah. If you want, you can also add this small piece at the back. That makes it lock even better and feels better. Now here's the fun bit. The shell ejection. Draw a line on the left side. Like a groove line. And then just cut like the front like a centimeter or so so the tube still stays the tube and then cover the front um this front section that i covered the front um you see it's cut out don't follow me because you need to experiment yourself as i've done that and i basically changed that front bit into something completely different in the end don't put too much glue because if you want to change the front you're going to have to remove that bit entirely and if you put too much glue it's going to be very hard now this bit you have to put a lot of glue in because this is the ejector and it has to be doable so basically make a square piece and cover the corrugations so i apologize in advance i forgot to take a lot of pictures for making the bullet but but i did make a video on how to make 50 bmgs the general concept is the same and here's a diagram of how to make bullets um just do what that video says but use the dimensions for like I forgot what it is. I think it's like 300 Magnum or something. Lapua Magnum. So yeah, that, uh, go over to that video. It's linked in the description and the card now. Um, yeah, and come back when you're done. Um, anyways, after this, uh, remember when you make the, like the bolt face, you have to constantly check with your bullet, see if it fits. If it doesn't make adjustments to your, like the very top bit, basically the last two steps. Because that's what that's what I mean by don't just copy how I cut that piece because you have to change it a bit probably. Yeah. So let's start. Now cut start cutting that groove but don't cut all the way yet. Cut like five centimeters. And then stick a piece of cardboard at the back of the bolt. It's like a little bit behind the furthest bit. Um which is the bolt face basically. You can see this is I zoomed in to where you're supposed to stick it at. And then add a piece of reinforcement behind that. Keep in mind you have to let a give a, give it a space, like give it space for the ejector to go through. And yeah, and then continue cutting and add some glue inside so it can be, so it stays a circle like a tube. And then cut um, a little bit down, which you can see. This is what I mean. I don't know how to explain it. If you want extra help, join the Discord server in the link below. I'll and message me i'll try and help you i guess here's a picture from another angle to help you understand a little bit better now 
put your ejection piece um into your thing and measure how much you want it to be like you know inside and then draw a line at where you want it to stop and then cut through that line and then just glue that on your gun be careful of your angle and like height so yeah now make a little ramp on the inside of the um, chamber so that your bullet can go out easily now cut a bullet sized hole in the thing as in the whole cartridge sized hole at the bottom of the thing so that your bullet can go inside the chamber now glue the ball to your rod and if you want you can also wrap that rod in like cardboard so it's like look like with a nicer color and yeah now make a curved bit this will be your uh, cheek rest and make a piece for the bottom it's basically like an arch and I'll show you a diagram as well this is basically everything you need to know about making a uh, cheek rest so first make an arch and then put a piece of thing under it so it's like a complete shape I guess then um, also the picture on the left like one next to one also shows you how it's attached together and then after that cut a little notch that is uh, basically where your fire pin will go into as in like when you pull the bolt back so it has to be a little longer than your fire pin firing pin detail um, and then just cover the corrugation Oh wait, no, no, cut, cut the notch on both, like top and bottom, and then co cover the corrugation. Now for the back bit, do a cut at the back that goes, like that turns slowly down, and like uh, it's like an angle cut going in, and then you go straight down after that. Here's also a picture of it, and then cover the corrugation. I'll return back to the diagram and switch back just for you to, you know, have a look. Now make three poles that goes into the holes of your back thing. This is the top. Um, just make them thick and strong and then cut corresponding holes at the bottom of your cheek breast okay now you put all those three pins in your uh, cheek rest and then put them back into the stock and then you through those holes get a pencil and then draw through like draw onto the uh, poles by drawing through that hole like shoving your pencil through that hole and drawing on the pole so you know where to drill the hole and then Use a drill or a pencil or knife or whatever to make a hole there and make some small paper pins that can go through that. Um, once you've got those pins, then you just pull the thing up as in like the whole whole thing and then at your desired height, do the same thing again and then draw onto those pencil holes and then you just have to shove those pin back, pack pins back in and then you have your adjustable cheek height thing, whatever, cheek weld, no way. Something, I forgot the name. Alrighty, and with that, I'm done with editing part two. The last part of this video would be finishing off the tiny details, making the scope and making the butt pad, the bottom thing, uh, the, the what's it? monopod, yeah, there we go, monopod, the bipod and the barrel, finishing the barrel and the front bit. So yeah, stay tuned for that, I guess. See you, bye.